Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to set up a connection to OpenAI's API where we're going to connect to ChatGPT's 3.5 Turbo Engine and in this video I will do it in C Sharp and I will actually use a Blazor server app but if you have an ASP.NET Core web app or a web API or if you even have a console app then you should still be able to follow along in this video because we're just going to create the method that will actually create the API call so the first thing we need to do before we create the project is to have an api key that we can use so to get the api key we need to go to platform.openai.com and inside here you need to create an account right now i am logged in with my own account then we have the url called account slash api keys and i will put this link in the description so if you are logged in and you have an api key you will just come to this page but else you will be asked to set up an account so as you can see in here i have two api keys already but what we want to do is go and create a new secret key and i'll just call it test two because i already have a test and then say create secret key and when you see the key in here you will just go and copy it and i'll actually just go and open a notepad so i can just keep it in here because when we click on the done button then we are not able to see it anymore so now that we have the api key set up we can go and create the project so i'll just go and open visual studio and i will go and create a new project and this will just be a blazor server app so i'll say next and let's go and call this for chat gpt app and i can see i already have that name so i'll just call it two and then i will go and say next and in case of the framework i'll just use it six it really doesn't matter in this application so we go and say create so as you can see in here i have a blazor server app set up now so if we just go and test it so you can see how the default page is looking so this is the standard default page when you created a new blazor server app we have some pages we can click on and the idea with this project is to go and delete everything on the front page and then i will create a input field so we can write some text and then a button where we can say send and then we will also get displayed the response just underneath the button so let's close the project and i will just go to the pages folder because in here we have the index page and because this is blazor we can actually go and do everything in the same file here so first of all i want to go and delete all the text that we had on the page and the page title will be index so that's okay so first of all i want to insert an input field where we're going to say that we want to bind the request variable that we're going to create in just a moment so that whatever we're going to put inside this input field is going to be saved inside this request variable the next thing i want to add is a button where we have an unclick event listener and when the button is clicked we're going to execute the send request method that we're also going to create in just a moment and then the text on the button will be send request. So in Blazor, we can just go and say code and then I open and closing bracket because then in here we're going to create all the code. And we actually also need a paragraph to display what the response will be. So we're just going to make a simple HTML paragraph and then we will have a variable called response. So now let's go and make all these variables. We can just go and say prop and then hit tab twice and we don't really need the get and set so we could just get rid of that so let's first take the request and the request is going to be a string and we will call it the same as up here so request and if we hit Control d on this line we will duplicate it and we can just go and take the response and say that this also should be a string and if you don't like the screen underlines we can just go and say that it should be equal to an empty string so the last thing we need is this send request method so I created a method that is a public method that is going to be async and it's going to return a task. And then we of course give it the name send request and it will take no parameters because we can just go and fetch these properties inside the code or actually inside the method because these are global variables that we can just go and get the value from and set the value to so the first thing i want to do here is to set an endpoint which is to the open api so that we know what url we're going to connect to and in this case it is the version one chat slash completions and then the next thing we have to do is to create a new object for the message that we're going to send so we want to make an array 
which is a new object here. And inside that array, we're going to create a new object also with a role inside and some content. And you can just go and set the role to be a simple user. And then you can see here we have the content. And if you really just wanna make the user be able to do anything, then we can actually just go and take this request because that is what we're going to send to the engine. So the content is going to be the request that is actually just the text that we put it inside the input field. So next up, we're going to create the whole data set that we're going to send to the model. So we will create a new object inside that have a model and it also contained the messages that we're going to send. It was actually just this one that we created and then a temperature. And I will really not go into depth with the temperature. You can just go and read about it on the open AI's documentation. But the important thing here is that we're going to connect to the GPT-3.5 dash turbo. Before we do anything else inside our code, we actually need to go and get the newtonsoft.json library. So we can just go and right click our project and say manage NuGet packages and then say browse. And then we want to go and type newtonsoft.json and then we want to install this library. You can just go and install the newest version. So when that's done, we can close this and we can go and say that we want to go and serialize the data object that we just created. But as you can see, when we just type it in here, we can see that the JSON convert needs something. So we can just go and click Alt Enter. And then we can see it want to use the Newtonsoft.json library. So we can just go and use that. So when I click on that, it will actually add it up here at the top. The next thing we want to do is to actually go and create the content that we have to send to the HTTP client request that we're going to make. So we have to create this string content. And the first parameter is going to be the JSON string that we created from our object. And the next one is the encoding to UTF-8. And if you don't have the encoding, just hit Alt Enter again. And we want to use the system.txt. So again, if we scroll to the top, you can see that we're going to use the system.txt for the encoding. And then we also want to say that this content is JSON. So now that we have the content ready, we can go and create the actual client that will make the request. So we just say that is an HTTP client and we can just go and call it client and say that we want to instantiate a new instance of this HTTP client class. So now we can actually go and use the client. So we can go and say client and then say dot default request headers because we're going to add a, another request header to this request that we're going to make. So we say add, and then we want to add a new authorization. And the authorization is going to be a bearer token, which is actually just our API key that we created. So we first want to say bearer. And next up, we want to go and take the API key that we created. And we can just go and copy it and put it inside to our bearer token. So you just need to have one space here and then you can go and paste it in. So next up, we can actually go and make the request. So we say we want to await this call because the client is going to send a post that is async. So it will create a post request to the open AI's API and it will target this endpoint and we're going to send this content with it. So we do get a response back when uh, this is finished, the call here. And when that's finished, we can go again and say await the response and we can go and say what contact did we get back. And we actually want to read this as a string. And the way that it works is that we're going to do it async. And that's also why we're going to await this. So what we end up with is a string with the response content of whatever ChatGPT was going to send back to us. But because we know that this string that is sending back to us is actually a lot of JSON, then we can go and use this J object where we're going to pass the actual string that we get in return. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to make an object out of the string that we get so that we easily can go in and say, what do we want to take out from the response? Because it's not only just going to return an answer, you know, like if you're inside the ChatGPT's website and you just send a response, it's not just a plain text that you get back when you do it 
to their API. You also get a lot of metadata. But as you can see, this J object also needs the Newton soft.json library, but it actually needed the link class that is underneath the Newton soft package. So we can just go and say alt enter, and then we can go and say we want to use the Newton soft.json.link also. So when we scroll to the top, we also have the link set up to our project. But when we now have the JSON response as an object, we can specifically go in and target the answer that it gives us back, which I think is in the most case is what you want, that you really want to know what was it that the chat GPT engine was answering to you. So what we can do is to go and say JSON response, and then we want to target the choices and we want to target the first value in the choices. So we're going to say index zero, and then the next index we're going to target is the message. And then we're going to target the content. And by saying dot value and then string, we make sure that we get this as a string. So I do believe that instead of calling it assistance message content, we can actually just go and say that this is the response. So let's go and say response instead. And then we of course want to go and get rid of this var. So we do actually get an error when we do this. And that's because we already have a response here. So we can just go and call this response to instead and also do it in here. So when this is done, we do actually need one more thing because this response need to update in the UI. So we have a method that we're going to execute to update the UI when we have a Blazor server app. And it is, it is this await and we're going to invoke async this state has changed method. So this should go and update the UI so that it knows that this response have a new value and it will go and display it inside the paragraph here. So let's go and test the application. We're going to run it and we are already on the front page. So if we just click our input field, we could go and say, say this is a test and then send the request and it will just take a little moment. And then we have the response here where it says, this is a test. So now you can actually just go and say everything to it. So let's say, what is the capital of France? and say send request and you can see it says the capital of france is paris so it does indicate that we have a connection to chat gpt when we now get this intelligent response so i hope you could use this video if you like the video please leave a like and go and subscribe to the channel it will help a lot to keep these videos coming but else just have a nice day bye